This is the first time that we've ever deployed a humanoid in a home, and to our knowledge, the first time anyone's ever done this in a home. If you want robots to be truly intelligent, they actually have to learn among us. They have to live among people and learn from this. So this is our new roommate. <laughs> <laughs>As soon as we finished filming last week's episode with Neo, we didn't part ways. Instead, the One X team put Neo in a car and took him to my apartment to live with me for two days. Science fiction has long promised that one day we could have humanoid robots in our homes, helping us with everyday tasks like chores, housekeeping, and even cooking. But that's not what I was most interested in. How would it feel to have a robot in my home? Would it be strange or uncomfortable? How would my friends and roommates feel? But before I can answer those questions, I had a few for Eric, one of Neo's creators. So in a few days, you guys are gonna deliver a Neo to live with me in my apartment for two days and a night. I'm very excited. I'm also a little nervous and curious about what the experience will be like, as well as what it will be like for future users who will have Neos in their homes. Yeah, we're super excited as well to bring Neo to your home. I think it's actually the first time that a humanoid is being put into a person's home uh, to do chores. Neo's gonna be excited to meet your laundry and your friends. <laughs> okay, great. For Neo to learn everything he needs to learn, he needs to be in the home. We wanna make sure that we can serve some like actually useful use cases. So if Neo can't do your coffee or make your bed, it's not gonna be useful in the home. So today we're gonna try out some of these tasks that are gonna prove whether or not Neo can be the first at-home humanoid. Okay, I am in my bedroom. Uh, there's a team of 1X robotics engineers outside of my bedroom who have asked me to stay in here until they, until they tell me to come out. Neo is making coffee, apparently. Kevin, can you go get Jason real quick? Yeah. Let's see what's going on. Neo made it. Well, you did he really? I swear. You handed it to me. I swear. Uh, okay. You actually made it. Yep. <laughs> Watch the tape. We're running back. I think most roboticists would think that a humanoid in your home for a long time is just not possible. And obviously, like we're filming, this is pretty set up. Yeah. But you guys are planning on shipping these things as soon as next year and scaling up pretty rapidly, pretty quickly. And I think, I don't know, what, what's the biggest difference in your mind with, with 1X and its approach to, to robotics? Neo is uniquely capable of being in the house, as you can see, like right now. Um, so, like, we want to start there because ultimately that's where intelligence is created. You know, you have, you know, we have humans, they grow up in homes. They get all this diverse data. They start to learn about the world. Like we think our robot should learn that way too. I do think the path to truly intelligent androids so that we can actually have billions of them on the planet doing all kinds of physical labor is first through the home so that you have this diversity of data. And then after that, you can go and capture like manufacturing, services, whatever. Doesn't really matter. This is in contrast to the more wedge strategy where you start with one deployment doing one task and you solve that task. It's really a question of like how diverse is it and how much of that do you have. So by going to the home, the sort of end game right from the start, then we're collecting the right data distribution to do this. Neil, can you get me the peppers and mushrooms? Thank you, sir. Neo, I'm, I'm curious, how should I cook these bell peppers? Saute them with a bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper, done in minutes. Uh, Neo, can you tell me a joke? Why did the scarecrow become a successful motivational speaker? I'm not sure. Because he was outstanding in his field. Uh, okay, yeah, that was a little predictable. Uh, can you give me an egg? Sir? Good sous chef. You're welcome. How long until you think I just like talk to you about my problems and hand you the eggs myself? Like, how can we flip this around, you know? We're getting there, but it might be a few more years before robots can handle full cooking duties flawlessly. For now, I'm here to help and keep you company. Maybe someday you'll be able to relax while I do all the work. Neo, uh, can you prove that those eggs aren't hard boiled?
So what will support look like? Obviously for the early folks, like things will probably go wrong sometimes yeah. or, or like what's, what's the, the theory there? Yeah, so I mean, it's not going to be super clean off the bat. Like, it's first generation product, uh, never been in the home before. Uh, it's not probably... just a first generation product. It's a first generation, most probably one of advanced consumer products of all time. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of moving parts. So, I mean, you can imagine there's going to be some issues and hiccups. So, I think one of the most important things if we're going to go into the home is just providing really quality support. So, if there's an issue, getting it solved the same day, making sure that you have as much uptime with your robot as possible, make sure you can enjoy the experience as much as you can. From day one, it's, it sounds like it's not right to expect that you'll just fully autonomously work for people the, the moment they get it for the end of time. It sounds like there's still some learning and, and training to do. The way we're going to tackle this problem is basically by having human teleoperation be a stand-in for the autonomy on day one. So it'll still be useful to do chores in your house, but this is fulfilled by a human operator who's remotely controlling the robot. And you can imagine that over time, as the AI gets better and better, we're replacing small parts of the uh, workflow of the tasks and chores with AI. Kind of like the ship of Theseus, right? Where you swap out one plank at a time, and then eventually it's a completely new ship that's powered by AI rather than humans. Can you talk about kind of some of the AI systems that are, are working now and that you want to get working in the future for, for Neo? Yeah, one kind of data that we're really interested in with Neo in the home is interactions with people. So, for example, um, if I go like this, Neo would understand what I'm trying to do. If I go like this, it'll kind of understand what I'm trying to do and like, uh, you know, play the game. And this kind of interaction where it, it sees humans and needs to respond to them. You know, one aspect of body language is just understanding what people want. So if I go like this, Neo should just understand it. It, it wants, I wanted to take the, the wallet. And uh, if, I, if I go like this, it should give it back to me, right? So everyday life is full of all kinds of these human uh, interactions. And by having it in the home, you can get robots to actually understand what people want. Cool. All right. Thank you, Neo. I guess we'll leave you here. Thanks. On day one, when we deliver the robot, the Neo will basically get a guided tour of your home. So you'll visit your living room, your kitchen, show where the, the rags are in the closet, and it'll just get a general spatial understanding of your home. From this, we'll train the ability to have it navigate autonomously in your home. And um, in terms of training the tasks autonomously, what we'll do is that once we have some data with uh, human teleoperation doing tasks, we'll feed that into our data engine where the robot can now start to predict what the human teleoperator would do uh, for a given chore. With a bunch of these skills, like going to your fridge and opening a fridge and getting a drink out, we'll chain them together um, using another AI model that will basically allow us to stitch together a very long horizon set of skills. And that can accomplish things like doing some chores or uh, fetching you a beer and so forth. Um, over time, more and more of these skills will be fulfilled by the AI models um, and uh, instead of teleoperation, and we'll try to phase that out over the course of next year. Lots of thorny questions around AI safety, human privacy, um, physical safety, and so forth. On the physical safety side, it's really important that the robot doesn't injure people, and part of our mechanical design is based on that principle that we want to make sure it has very low kinetic energy. But even so, you have to be really careful about what you're doing. It, uh, like passive safety is important and crucial and necessary, but not everything. So, for example, the robot has to learn how to avoid dangerous situations. It has to know how to recover from failures. And it has to know where the no-go zones in a house, for example, not getting cl too close to the banister so that it might fall off, not getting too close to you know, fragile objects and things like that. That's on physical safety. On user privacy, you know, I'm going to have one of these in my home as well very soon, and I don't want it to see certain things in my house. So as a, as a you know, user, it's really important that like, the user has control over um, what the Neo is able to see and uh, what we're able to train on from the capability standpoint. So you can think about it as the user has complete control over what they allow the Neo to see. If you've ever seen um, that, that episode of Black Mirror where certain people are kind of masked out by, um, by kind of blurred uh, images, that's what we're doing as well, where the user can control what things are blurred out from the Neo's point of view. From a privacy standpoint, it's also important that there are geofences so that the operator cannot go places that the user doesn't want them to go. So it's definitely a very tricky problem, but we're trying to work through ways to solve that. And then finally, on the AI safety side of things, you know, once we have uh, users being able to train their own Neos, there's a very analogous problem to chatbots today where you want to make sure that users aren't requesting the robot to do things that would be unsafe to the robot or unsafe to the human or the environment. The only other safety thing I, I guess I'm curious about is sort of the, the cybersecurity aspect of Neo or, or the ability for, to keep people that shouldn't be accessing Neo out and like how you guys think about that. Right. By far, that's one of the most important concerns in building a you know, good product here. Cybersecurity directly translates to physical safety of our users. And the reason why that the stakes are so high in this case is that if someone um, is actually able to cause harm with, uh, by hacking into a Neo, 
Not, not only does that kill 1x, that probably will set back the entire industry of humanoid robotics and general purpose robotics in the home by decades. Right, so uh, we take that extremely seriously and red teaming and security audits are just the start of what we're doing to make sure that our product is safe and we'll have a much more detailed plan that we're going to share in the future before we go to market. If you want robots to be truly intelligent, they actually have to learn among us. They have to live among people, they have to experience our world, they have to do experiments, observe the outcomes and learn from this. 2025 is going to be all about going to the home. And 2026 is then going to be all about scaling that. Thousands in 2025, tens of thousands in 2026, hundreds of thousands in 2027, and then millions in 2028. He picked up the egg and, and handed it to me, and it was just so like, it felt very monumental, I guess. It, it, it was a very strange feeling, because obviously like we're filming this for an episode, like there's people with cameras, and some of the engineers from 1X are standing by, but I don't know, just it felt like a sci-fi moment becoming reality. <laughs> so this is our new roommate. <laughs> it's pretty cool, right? This is very cool. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. Shoot. No! Oh <laughs> How do you guys feel with him living here as our new roommate? He'll pay rent. <laughs> I'm, I'm game. <laughs>